Hi, my name is Mary O'Brien. I'm the State Bicycle Pedestrian Coordinator, and today I'm going to be going over some changes that we have from the 2020 to the 2021 FDOT design manual. We're going to start by today going over FDM 222, which is the pedestrian chapter. So one general change that has happened is that we've updated the TEM reference to 5.2 for anything on pedestrian crosswalks. And technically it's called 5.2 treatment for pedestrian crosswalks at mid block and unsignalized intersections. In 222.2.2, we've changed the heading to be curb ramps and blended transitions. So we've added the word blended there. And then we added the sentence that talking about alpha identification in index 522-002 for the various curb ramps for ease of callouts in the plans. And we also provided more information on pedestrian push button landings and curb ramp requirements. In general, this section had some reworking for being more succinct and also adding some clarity. Next in 222.2.3.2 in the mid block subsection, we also made some changes. And one of the most significant is that we removed saying that mid block crosswalks should not be located when the spacing between adjacent intersections is less than 660 feet. So that's something we're super excited about. We hope that it will provide more opportunities for pedestrians to safely and easily cross the street. And then we also moved figures of mid block crosswalks with refuge islands to chapter 210, which is the arterials and collectors chapter. And also more information on Refuge Islands was moved to Chapter 210. So previously the Refuge Island information was in Chapter 212 intersections. So this is just reiterating that the Refuge Island information has been moved to the Arterials and Collectors chapter. We had some changes in the bulb out section. So we added clarification to consult with the district drainage engineer on drainage accommodations for the curb extension during phase one of the design and see the drainage design guides figure for more information. So in the past, we'd had some concerns about how drainage would interplay with a curb extension, and we reached out to the drainage engineers here in central office, and they reached out to their district counterparts, and we all kind of came together uh, it should always be surmountable, but just make sure you're coordinating with those um, district drainage engineers early on so that um, the proper accommodations can be made. So this is also kind of related to curb extensions, and that is that we're, we're really highlighting in the street furniture chapter that we don't want street furniture to obstruct sight distances or visibilities of or the visibility of pedestrians at crosswalks. And so we specifically call out now not to use street furniture on the curb extensions themselves. So this goes back to the pedestrian refuge islands, which we talked about earlier. Uh, we have a new section now on pedestrian refuge islands at intersections, which will be discussed in one of the other webinars. But here in the detectable warning section of the pedestrian chapter, we talk about when to include detectable warnings in a pedestrian refuge island. And so we called out that they should be used when one or more of these following conditions exist. So if there's a change in surface texture, if there's a change, a change in elevation, such as a curb ramp, a change in the horizontal alignment of the path within the refuge island. So sometimes we have the refuge islands kind of jog so that there's some storage space in there if we anticipate large groups of pedestrians crossing at a time. And then when there's a two stage crossing, meaning that the um, the light would only allow for pedestrians to make it part way across the street at a time. And that's a summary of the changes in Chapter 222 pedestrian facilities from the 2020 FDM to the 2021 FDM. Thank you.